Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, we've seen a lot of families that have purchased cars, and uh, we've seen car tabs in the range six, seven hundred, even higher, um, have come back. This amendment specifically caps that amount to 0.5% of the value of the vehicle. So if you had a $20,000 vehicle, you'd get a $100 MVET charge on your tabs. We feel this really goes after uh, those families that have got those cars in the sort of the $40,000, $50,000 range and helps the, the tabs not run away from them so that they can uh, afford to run their cars. I encourage a yes vote. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I move adoption of 534 concerning MVET values. The good lady from the 36, for what purpose do you rise? Point of order, Madam Speaker. Please proceed. Uh, request uh, ruling on scope and object, please. A uh, request has been made on scope and object on House Bill 2201, Amendment 534. The title of the bill 2101 is lengthy but includes language limiting the scope of the bill to creation of a market value adjustment program to provide a credit for certain taxes authorized by the voters in 2016 in a manner that limits the delay of the voter approved 2016 plan. In addition to a credit, the amendment both changes the administration of the valuation schedule used to determine those taxes and would have the effect of delaying the voter approved projects. The speaker therefore finds and rules the amendment is beyond the scope of the bill as defined by its current title. The point of order is well taken. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, similar to an amendment that we offered earlier, this requires um, before Sound Transit can spend any of the new dollars that are, or rebates that have gone through the program, no matter what we decide this evening, they have to go back to the voters to get approval for that. I'd encourage a yes vote. Thank you, Madam Speaker. As part of the underlying bill, it prioritizes where money should come from to pay for the cost savings, uh, sorry, the, the expenditures uh, covered in the uh, TAP reduction program that we are eventually, I'm sure, are going to vote on here tonight. Um, we feel that picking parking spaces around our metro stations as one of the top priorities isn't the right way to go. So this offers an alternate list of priorities. If you can't park your car at the train station, it's going to cause some significant problems. And we've seen this in other areas where we've seen train stations where parking was removed, particularly in the Seattle area. And so we want to make sure that we've got enough parking around our train stations that if we want to use the transit, that we can actually do that. This gives a, a, a different priority here and uh, I'd appreciate a yes vote. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, this amendment simply changes the underlying bill so that any uh, work related to the bill cannot be approved until it's gone back to the voters. Uh, we think this is a good way of making sure that anything that's going to happen gets approval from the folks that originally uh, approved Sound Transit. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, as part of uh, what we've been seeing in the last uh, little while here with uh, folks uh, seeing their car tabs go up significantly. This amendment basically doubles the um, credit back that they would have under any scheme that we may approve this evening, but they'll get double the, the amount of money back, which we, fair is, we feel is a fair and real valuation on the amount of credit needs to go back on the car values. I encourage a yes vote. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. I'd like to move the awesome amendment 542. The good lady from the 36, for what purpose do you rise? Point of order. Please proceed. Uh, request a ruling on scope and object, please. A ruling on scope and object on House Bill 2201, Amendment 542 has been requested. The title of the House Bill 2201 is lengthy, but includes language limiting the scope of the bill to creation of a market value adjustment program to provide a credit for certain taxes authorized by the voters in 2016 in a manner that limits the delay of the voter approved 2016 plan. In addition to a credit, the amendment bill changes the administration evaluation schedule used to determine those taxes and would have the effect of laying in the voter approved projects. The speaker therefore finds and rules that the amendment is beyond the scope of the bill as defined by its title. The point of order is well taken. Thank you, Madam Speaker. We think it's a good amendment and I encourage a yes vote. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, last fall, our voters approved one of the uh, largest um, transportation transit packages in our uh, state's history. And uh, I believe that when they sat down with their ballots and they looked at what it was going to do, they saw some good things in there. And we saw that as a result and we saw the, the initiative pass. What I don't think happened, though, is that the material that they had in front of them was as clear as it could have been. And as we've seen over the last few months, voters are outraged about the increases in the tabs that they've seen. They've seen an inflated price of their vehicles that Sound Transit used. It used a, an older schedule, which it shouldn't have done, which this bill will address by using a 2006 schedule. Now, although that will provide some small relief, which is good, 
what it won't do is go after the real value of the car. So some of the amendments that we previously offered really went to that issue. The 2006 schedule uses an average of the vehicles because it was created by a legislature, previous legislature. Um, the Kelly Blue Book is the real value of your car. So if your car is a lower value um, and you're on the 2006 schedule, you're, you're going to be paying that average. You're not paying what your car is really worth. So if you have a car like a Dodge Dart, for example, which unfortunately depreciated a lot faster than many other cars, then you'll end up paying a lot more uh, in your MVET tax because the valuation of that car is a lot higher. And while the 2006 schedule does help a little, it doesn't go far enough. And that's what the genesis of these amendments were about. The doubling of the fee that we had as an amendment for this bill, that was to address the difference there, to try and make that up, to provide real tax relief. Now, the body, body across the rotunda has another option, which we believe provides real tax relief here. And in all the solutions that we've seen, and we've heard it mentioned this evening already about delivery of these projects, none of these things that we've talked about tonight, the amendments and this underlying bill, um, prevent these projects from being delivered. What they do is they instruct Sound Transit to restructure its financing in a way that is fairer and more consistent for what the voters thought they were voting on last fall. And so um, what you'll see from us this evening, Madam Speaker, is a mixed vote. Some of us think that we'll take a little bit here and we'll continue fighting and moving on with this. Other of us, other of us just say, look, let's put this down and figure out where we need to go. Um, so I'm, I'm concerned that we're not providing the real relief that we need to. Um, I would love to have seen some of these amendments hang, particularly the 0.5 cap as well, which will help uh, some of our lower income folks. But uh, this is what we have this evening. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker.